Hello everybody, I am Ben from Team Panic and today we're going to be doing the 9 hour beta weight challenge. Now, this uh, is a challenge to build a beta weight in 9 hours. That is a 1.36 kilogram uh, combat robot. Now there are a couple of rules that go along with this. They are, it needs to be completed in 9 hours. There are no spinners. There are using basic tools, no CAD and CNC. Needs to conform to all of the kind of normal Robot Wars rules. It needs to be 1.36 kilos, and there needs to be no pre-work done in getting this stuff set up. So, to start this 9-hour challenge, I kind of had a quick look around through my workshop, and I found these things here. So, these wheels and motors are actually out of an old RC car, and I think they're actually going to work really well for this challenge, mostly because the wheels actually are larger than the EDF that I also found uh, in my workshop. Now, I'm going to use this EDF. It, the rules do say that you're not supposed to have anything pre-bought. This was not bought for this challenge. It was bought for a different project completely, but I actually really want to use this in this challenge and see what I can get out of it. And I think it's going to make an interesting looking beetle uh, at the very least. So, these motors and gears and uh, wheels though, like I said, these came out of an RC car. These I did have lying around and I wanted to do this 9 hour challenge as close as I possibly can to the rules. So rather than go through and actually use these, I'm going to toss all of these out. And instead we're going to use an actual RC car, the same model and make that I had from before. This time I've actually bought a brand new one and we're going to use that and we're going to tear that down as one of the first things we're going to do today. So I'm actually about an hour into this challenge already because I've gone out, I've got the car, I've also got uh, some chopping board which is going to act as the armor plates, top, bottom and sides I think. I also have some steel but I'm not going to throw that up on camera right now, there's not enough space on this desk to add all of that steel down. Uh, but there is going to be the steel that's going to hold the motors and everything like that. So I think first of all we're going to tear this new RC car down. Once I've teared the RC car down, we're going to have a look at the overall design that I want to do because, uh, yeah, the inside of this RC car is going to influence the way that this design goes from here. Now, I know some people are going to say that this RC car is, it has plastic gears, it has kind of weak motors, and all of those things are true, uh, but I wanted to try and do this anyway. I wanted to see how well these motors hold up. This is supposed to be a challenge so that anybody can go ahead and build a Beetle. So if I can get this RC car to become a Beetle, then I feel that that kind of succeeds with the challenge. Worst case scenario, I put this into the arena, the gears snap, and I swap it out for some Metal Geared uh, motors that I have lying around elsewhere. Like I said, I just wanted to see if it was possible to do this with an RC car. So anyway, let's gra uh, crack this RC car open and get started. Okay, so now that we have the motors and the wheels released from all of the rest of this stuff, uh, it's now actually time to have a look at the design that I want to go for. So, the only real problem I can see right now is that these gearboxes are just weird. They are a very odd shape, a very odd size, and they might make life a little bit more challenging uh, to put this thing together. But that's okay. Uh, like I said before, worst case scenario, we can drop back from using these and go back to using one of these, which is just a pretty standard beta weight motor that a lot of people use. Uh, these things would be a lot easier to mount because they just have screws through the faceplate that we could mount through some steel and that would work pretty damn well. Um, but as I said before, I want to try and use these motors. So we'll, we'll see what we can do with these. Worst case scenario, we'll jump back to that little guy over there. So, the plan for these things is, as I said before, we're going to try and mount the, t the pair of them into some steel. That steel is going to run down the length of the robot, or at least down the front of the robot, down this way. And then we have our EDF, which will sit out behind, just like this. And basically, what I'm really looking at trying to do here is we're going to have a robot that's kind of 
wheels, if I can draw a circle, just like that. And then have the EDF sitting just in behind the wheel, so the EDF is kind of like this. And then we're going to have the steel that runs down the front of the robot. And that's going to support a wedge shape of some kind. That is a very long wedge, but you get the kind of the general idea. So that's the, the wedge shape. Of course, the wedge is going to actually fit inside the wheels so that the, the thing can drive inverted as we probably are going to need it to. And then I'm also probably going to have some extra wedge shape going on out the back just to kind of protect the EDF a little bit and see what I can do with that. Uh, so the current uh, problems that I can see at this point in time, it's mounting these motors. That is going to be a bit of a pain because like I said, those uh, motor mounts and motor gearboxes are a very, very weird shape. Uh, it's kind of crossed my mind to potentially use this because that does have the mounting for those motors in it. Um, but it is actually too short. If we throw the motors back in here, uh, just quickly, just like that, throw the motor back in and then try and grab that EDF and place that at the back. You can see that the EDF is only just kind of the same size as the width of this thing, which means that uh, it's going to be very difficult to mount that EDF because anything I try and place in on here, I'm going to need to then very quickly make a couple of right angles so that I can then mount the EDF correctly. Uh, so that may not be the best option. I might cannibalize this though. If I can like cut it down the middle and cut it across the, so cut it down the middle and cut it across the face plate uh, up here, we might be able to wedge some steel in this gap, make this a little bit wider, um, and then mount the motors that way. But like I said, I'm not 100% sure on this right now. I'm gonna have to do a little bit of thinking and a little bit of uh, design work, maybe even cut a couple of pieces of steel and see what I can do with all of that stuff and try and get to this point at some point in the future. This is actually going to be the design that we're running with. This is our, our full design file, because of course we're not doing any CAD or any, uh, any other software design at this point in time. It's just going to be this little picture that we've got on the table. So hopefully this works. Um, like I said, I'm gonna have to mess around a little bit, try and get these, these motors sorted out and mounted up. Once we have those, I think it's going to be pretty smooth sailing, but we'll have a look and see what we can come up with. Okay, so that did not go very well. I tried a little piece of off-cut steel here, and trying to get these motors mounted up was just a huge hassle. These things, as I said before, they've got a very weird shape to them, and yeah, they were just <laughs> getting a, a mount for this just with hand tools was going to be a real pain. So what I've decided is I am actually going back to plan B, and we're going to use the actual base that came with this thing. So I'm going to end up, like I said, going back and doing it this way. So we're going to mount our motors back into the chassis. And what I'm thinking is if I cut off the kind of front along through here and then along through there, I've actually got a nice like flat base and a wedge shape going on that I can then use to actually build this robot out a little bit. Um, we're going to have to see how well this goes. I don't have too much that I can use to actually get a wider gap across here. So I am going to cut it straight down the middle and extend it out just a little bit because, as I said before, the EDF is only just going to fit inside that area. So I need to have a good way of mounting this EDF up. Uh, so to do that, I will kind of, like I said, kind of want to widen this out just that little bit. And then hopefully with that, just that little bit wider, we should be able to mount off some uh, pieces of cutting board or some metal or something out the back here to actually then mount the EDF to. So I think this should be okay. Like I said, we're going to cut the front off and then cut a huge line down through the middle here and see what we can do about extending the width of this whole little toy car. So I've cut the motor mount now out of the RC car and I've also padded out the bottom with a couple of uh, rough cut pieces of a uh, cutting board down the bottom here just like hacksawed these out of a, a piece of cutting board and they're gonna sit down together under there now I was planning on having a big sheet of metal in underneath here straight out the front to add a bit of rigidity to the frame and also to add a bit of weight uh, however it seems as though I can't actually drill straight holes by hand so that is gonna have to go and sit over there for the moment we're gonna have to go through and finish this off without 
doing that. I might have another go at cutting some holes in that later on, but for now I want to press on and see what I can do about getting the frame sorted out. So the current plan is to build the frame now from more cutting boards. So we're going to have a piece of cutting board that is cut through here and then expands out to the width where the wheels are going to sit. And it is then also going to have the holes cut in it at the back to hold the EDF just like this. So that's going to sit kind of somewhere back here. There's going to be a little hole cut so that this little brim on the EDF so it's in underneath the cutting board that I'm going to put down as the base plate. Now, uh, if I do manage to get this piece of metal cut back up nicely, it will sit through this way and under here, and it will drop the base of the cutting board down by an extra 3 mil. But that's actually not going to be too bad because it will mean that this guy sits closer towards the actual center point of the wheels, which is what I wanted in the first place anyway. So it's, uh, it's coming along okay-ish at this point in time. Um, I, am, I think I'm a little bit behind where I should be and I may not get this done in nine hours, but I'm going to uh, keep going anyway and see what I can do about finishing this off, at least uh, doing it with the hand tool method and nothing else. So let's let's keep going because I want to cut this base plate out next and see what it looks like after that. Okay, so now we're actually starting to get somewhere. I've uh, done up a quick little base plate down here. This is made out of relatively thick cutting board, so it's actually going to be a pretty good base, and it's quite stiff and sturdy. It's also uh, actually relatively heavy, which is good, because I was wondering uh, if I was actually even going to make weight with this thing. Uh, so now that that is in place, with the wheels back on, I've just been doing a little bit of... Uh, CAD or cardboard aided design uh, and looking at where I want the actual angles of this thing to sit. So as you can see, I'm kind of leveraging the base up just a little bit because I want the top plate, which is probably going to be the same thickness of uh, cutting board, to come all the way down to the ground level and then we're going to angle it by just kind of uh, sanding off one side till we get a nice point so that it ends up something like this. Um, we may end up changing it so that, uh, well, I might end up putting a spatula or something across the top just to give a little bit of extra weight down in the front uh, and also to give a nicer contact point with the ground. But at this point in time, this is actually going pretty well and we've also even got part of the mount for the EDF out the back here. So I've left this little slot in the uh, in the cutting board here and that is going to allow the lip of the EDF through just like this and then what we need to do now is actually place some holes down into the cutting board over here which we can run a pipe clamp through to hold the EDF in place because that's how this is going to be held in place once we've done that I am going to as I said before put some little triangles of uh, cutting board up through the back just to give this thing a little bit more protection because I don't really want that getting destroyed. I mean, this is only going to be for an open air class, but still uh, having some protection is better than no protection, I guess. Uh, so yeah, this is it's going pretty well. I need to kind of measure out these angles and things and cut an extra piece of board that's going to sit across the side here. And then there's going to be some little aluminium angles sit in the sides and hold those side pieces on and then the top is going to be held on with more aluminium angle on those side pieces uh, clamping everything together. So hopefully all of that works. Uh, this piece of cardboard should give me the length that I need for my next piece of cutting board so I think that might be the next trick or maybe we will uh, cut out these side panels first and get that all working. Either way we'll get something done anyway. Okay, so here we are. Uh, we're actually now at the end of the nine hours. Uh, just because kind of some of this filming and a few of the kind of uh, issues that I've had have taken me a little while to solve and we have got to the end of the nine hours and there is nothing inside. There is no electronics uh, and as you can see the top plate or the top armor is just a piece of cutting board right now. It's not even um, actually shaped correctly so it needs to have a wedge cut down the front here so that it actually sits nicely um, and it is also not mounted but the mounting brackets are sitting here so these are just two little aluminum plates uh, that are going to sit just in the top here and one of these goes on this side there we go uh, so they are two little aluminum plates that are going to sit in there and then I'm going to tap 
holes in here, or I'm going to cut, drill holes first, then tap the holes, and there are going to be screws from the top plate down into those, and that should finish off this beetle, but I am actually out of time. I'm out of time completely and totally, and as I said, I haven't even got the electronics in. Uh, so, I mean, I'm actually, I'm relatively happy with how this has gone so far. Uh, as you can see, we did put these little side fins on uh, since the last time, which are, of course, what holds the top plate on. Um, and as you can see, the EDF at the back overbalances the thing unless that top plate is on. So with the top plate and the electronics in through the middle here, we should be okay. I think we're also a little bit underweight. I think I'm about 700 grams, which means I have 600 grams to play with uh, for the electronics. Uh, which is, you know, uh, they aren't going to weigh all that much. Maybe the battery will weigh uh, a pretty significant amount, but not 600 grams worth, that's for sure. Um, but yeah, so like I said, we've got the, the top plate that still needs to go on and the electronics that need to go in. So yeah, while I was going through and doing these, so these are just uh, held in place with four bolts. The bolts are a little loose right now because I've just finger tightened these to get them in place to have uh, this shown on camera. Um, but yeah, so also while I was doing that, I went through and cut some holes in the top up there so that the EDF can be mounted with a hose clamp. Now, I thought this was a really, really great idea. The only problem is that the EDF is actually sitting a little bit loose and it has to for the EDF to actually spin freely. If I don't have it sitting loose, then uh, if I like tighten this even a, a little bit further, then the blades in here start to actually hit on the outer wall as that deforms with the pressure from the actual uh, hose clamp. So I'm not really sure what I'm gonna do about that. Uh, I might have to make up a different mount for this. But as I said, I am completely out of my nine hour time frame uh, to keep building this robot. So what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna keep this uh, as is. This is gonna be part one of this series. Part two, we'll be going through doing the electronics and finishing this top plate, getting that spick and span. I think the, the first point here is going to be to cut uh, the wedge along the front and make that perfect. And once that wedge is cut, then we'll uh, be able to place the top plate correctly. And once we have that in place, we'll have how much room we have inside for our electronics and we can sort it all out from there. Uh, but yeah, on the whole, I'm actually not too unhappy with this. This is my first foray into building things without using CAD and a 3D printer. So not not too bad. Anyway, uh, that is going to be the end of this episode. I hope you guys enjoyed that one, and I will see you for part two.